Hey guys, welcome back to another video developing a React Native application. So in a previous video, we went through the app, so some quick introductions through the app, the design, what it could look like and how it functions and also did a quick uh, setup of the environment. Now, once we installed it, I uh, got the app set up and running, we opened up with our preferred ID, so in my case, WebStorm. Uh, now, what we're going to do is install some local packages. So before we did npm i minus g expo cli, that was a global package. We're going to do some local packages that will save specifically to this application. So I've got app.js up and running. Let's close that. So inside of our terminal, let's go ahead. There's two ways to install it using React Native. So we could either do a traditional way of npm i or npm install, either one. Or we could do expo i. Now expo i, uh, not expo i, sorry, expo install. Expo install is basically the same as npm install. However, some packages aren't fully compatible. And so expo will go and extract the ones that are for expo. So certain packages are already native and it picks it up like that. And so let's go ahead and install these packages. So first one being at react nate uh, react navigation sorry react navigation slash native now this is a navigation package which allows us to navigate from screen a to screen b to screen x y z so very easily you can do this natively but it's much easier with this package it's very well uh, documented very well developed and has a lot of features that you guys will want now with this package also comes some dependencies depending on the screens you choose. Um, so each screen will have some dependency it requires. In this case, we need React Native Gesture Handler, React Native Reanimated, React Native Screens, React Native Safe Area Context, at React Native community slash master view so that is all the dependencies for react navigation just double check that is all correct and next one that we'll need is at react native community slash sorry not community <laughs> react native async storage slash async storage now what is a sync storage that is a local database or data store where we can store our uh, information so any data for it is key based um, now react native does have one that comes in by default however it's deprecated and they recommend or the documentation recommends we use this library instead for any future apps so it makes sense to stay clear of anything deprecated unless your app actually definitely needs it um, and if you build a new app it most likely won't so the next package you'll need is react native vector icons now this one is a package with a full database of different uh, icons from different areas such, such as font awesome etc and we're going to pull two icons from there. One is um, the logout icon that we put in our design and the delete icon, which we put in our design as well. So let's go ahead and press enter here. Uh, this will take a few seconds to minutes to install. So as you can see, I found five that's compatible with native modules and three, which is just using PM. So go ahead and pause here and replay once it's done. Okay, welcome back guys. So it's installed. Now let's go ahead and have a look at our project directory. So you can expand that. Now we've got a few files or so folders, this node modules folder and package.json. So within package.json, we've got a few dependencies. So most of these we just installed. Some of these came with the expo initialization. So such as expo, the status bar, react, dom, react native. This came with 
uh, this particular setup and then these ones we install ourselves um, within here this kind of tells the app what packages it needs um, so then once you try to let's say you share it to someone they can install these packages too that's required to run the app so we can go ahead and close out of that so we can open up app.js so we can look at the basics of the code of the app and let's also run the app so if we do expo start that will run the app so type that in terminal and let me go ahead and reload uh, my mobile so you guys can see it in real time okay here we go so there's my phone that is loading up here um, so let's let that load so here we go the ones that are recently in development that's the one you kind of want to click on that's running you can click that list down there where it says recently opened okay it's taking longer than it should it could be that it's still loading let's go out there and back in yep now there's no project so it's trying to find it let's see try one more time Right, let's see what's going on it could most of the time just be a wi-fi issue so what i'm gonna do is pause it restart my wi-fi okay so now the app is loading um as you see it just loaded up straight away so open up app chairs start working on your app so what we can do is we can make some changes right here so let's say we want to now say hello world rather than whatever was there we load that up it has fast refresh so as soon as you hit control s to save it should start reloading straight away and of course in good fashion it doesn't do what it's meant to All right let's try that again Let's do a reload on our side. Now it worked. Right, so as you can see, the text changed. Let's try that one more time. Please fast refresh this time. Let's see. Load that up. There we go. Now that was much faster. So that's pretty good. We got a very basic app up and running. Now let's have a look at a template. In our template, we've got a few few components that um, ideally when you're developing you kind of want to make the components first and um, then kind of develop the screens and connect it all together so kind of make the component base so in the next video what we'll do is go ahead and create those components so I'll catch you guys in the next video